Hi Libra, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. This is a general reading, so it will not resonate with every Libra. It could be vice versa. You take what resonates, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Uh, thank you to those who like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. It is much appreciated. Please continue to do so. All right. All right, Libra, I've taken the liberty of pulling the cards. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So Libra, how are you coming to the week? It's the two of Earth. How am I getting this card? Okay. The advice is a star card. All right, nice. And the outcome is the six of Earth. Very, very, very nice. So Libra, it looks like you're starting something that could bring in some tangible results, which could be interpreted as money, as uh, the pentacle, as some, um, this could be career opportunities opening up for you. Whatever this may be for you, Libra, you're on the right path here. You may be getting a lot of, of attention, A lot of patronage of people are coming to you. They want your advice. You, some of you are in your life's purpose. You, some of you need to completely merge yourself with this position. Whatever it may be, it looks like it may be something more independent in nature, more independent. Some of you, you're at a place of weighing up the, the options, the pros and the cons that continue to do this. Do I divide myself between? Some of you have pre been presented with a, another option, like you got a job, but then there's also something you do on the side, or you're just getting multiple job offers. You may already have a job. you are shining the the advice here is to do what best suits you on your divine path or in regards to you accepting yourself completely and utterly what is best for you what feels best have you come into self acceptance self acceptance that's the only way you're going to fully move into this direction. Right here between the, you, it's like divided effort. Two of Pentacles, juggling, work home, two jobs, two sources of income, six of Earth, putting into two real options, you know, putting your energy here and there. So you're divided. But on one of these paths, you you definitely are shining. You're shining bright. This is what you're supposed to be doing. It's like the universe is trying to usher you into some solidification of. Page of Earth at the bottom of the deck. You've already said, I am, I will, I'm doing but I think you have said that about two or more different things because it looks like you're divided. Something is, there's going to be gifts of money or money flowing in or more people bringing in, you know, more opportunity. Also, some of you keep in mind that some business relationship contract might not be on the up and up. It might not be, um, it may be frowned upon. It might be, you know, suspect. Or it just may be something that you cannot commit to. Or you won't end up fully committing to it. Some of you are learning more. You want to learn more. Some position is asking you to learn more. To increase your knowledge. To be the scholar. <clears throat> lack. Yeah. Some of you, you lack. blessings yes yeah, like the universe is trying to 
bless you, usher you into a more solid, stable career opportunity or job. This is money and material possessions and habits. Something is telling you to increase your work ethic. There could be lack there or lack thereof. There is a not a strong work ethic for some of you. Maybe because you're doing something that you feel like um, you're not in alignment with. This is not on your path. Or there wasn't enough money coming in. So it was it was lackluster in regards to the effort you gave to it and also in regards to the return the return wasn't great so your energy wasn't there in that increase your work ethic here because you're going to be ushered into a real blessing career opportunities open to you in whatever facet you're looking for them to be open you're you may be helping a young person in regards to their entrepreneurial endeavor Whatever this is, you need to merge your complete self to it so that you can see a great and even greater return on your investment. What you get give to it is what you'll get out of it. This could be a love affair also. Libra, you could be given to two parties or you're dealing with someone who is giving they're like physically giving money to two parties you, you need to heal somebody thought somebody was dying somebody is healing the blessing is healing is their health getting better the restoration you know being restored back to Some of it, because you lack finances, it is directly affecting you emotionally too. You want someone else to give you money or pay you back or, or there, there might be a return of money. Live a very interesting week. For you, um, it just looks like work, work, work. And, and just continue to put all of your effort behind it. Divided effort gets divided results. Do know that. Be calculated in a decision that you need to make here about you know your life's path it looks like once you make the decision things open up for you that's the outcome here for some of you blessings there's lack here because you haven't chosen but there, there's blessings that rest on the other side if you choose a specific path that is uniquely divine set up in order for you Some of you feel like you lack knowledge of. Increase that. That's easy. Increase your knowledge. Some of you are dealing with someone who is given to two parties. Then they're, they're saying they want to restore something with you and build with you, but they're still energetically or either monetarily giving to two parties. The building or the restoration with you might be because of children and because of money. They don't want to have to divide the money. The material possessions or this is how you feel. 
you may want to continue on this path because you don't want the division of so maybe you allow someone to continuously give to two parties you and someone else or vice versa someone thought someone was dying someone is being restored to health and they're going to find out about maybe some underhanding underhanded dealings that were going on some love affair business something that was going on all right libra stay tuned for l's real corner whatever you want to call it but some real world advice in regards to dating and we couple the tarot with it i hope that you took something from this reading you have a really good week it doesn't look like a bad week at all it says you're on the right path here that is the advice for you or choose the path that feels divinely orchestrated for you put your energy effort time behind it because blessings come with the decision okay all right so thank you libra stay tuned all links are below if you want to book your own personal reading if you want to get dating advice all right take care guys hello everyone so today on l's real corner all right so today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men you can pertain this to women too but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching um the videos uh subscribing to the channel than men so i apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex just apply it to your life right okay all right so emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal okay though these are non-committal people these are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you uh with anything or with anybody it, it might spill over into every facet of their life we're talking about more so relationships romantic relationships um so that's that's what we have here not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people they could be married uh, in love with another or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit um, and which hence they are emotional emotionally unavailable so when we look at when we dissect this this term here we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable the mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because you know they tell me how much they like me they compliment me they touch me we have sex blah 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 so you rationalize and you say they're not emotionally unavailable they are whatever you want to deem them in as but emotionally unavailable what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense, suppo supposedly, you know. Um, it is a relationship. It, it could be if an if-then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this. This type of person, the emotionally unavailable person, is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me well let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are they're complimentary they're seductive you know so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of 
they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason. We've got some reasons here. It could be more uh, to invest emotionally. Okay, so you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my turn my terms, my routine, and their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No, they're not into that. There's no um, investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay, so this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah. Uh, contentment. Yeah. In this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more, 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 better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within your reason. And if you have defined it completely and utterly, and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are, what you want, and then you can start to ask, answer some of these questions. Like, what is my end game? Right? Okay, so anyway moving right along you say um i say what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay granted it can happen it can happen but i do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation an emotionally unavailable person this is not a situation that happens overnight it's not a situation that that doesn't happen without drama without the breakups to makeups just it's not a situation that you just say okay i want commitment 
and you tell the person and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time and you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another, how will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you. The page of swords. Be inquisitive. Be curious. Be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask Sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person learn your person this is if you want commitment learn this person so you know what you're dealing with you know who you're dealing with the most i say this every single time or i ask the question every time i i do a reading a personal reading the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth. Expecting, uh... The asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You can get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years well we know that that is not the truth you we both go on about our lives you find out that i've only been doing youtube videos for two years uh well three years and then you say you come back to me you say well i i asked you the question how long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I have, you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along. You want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So, you, you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably, most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say well i only see you on wednesday and friday what are you doing you know the other days of the week or i know you say you work blah 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 but um maybe we can get together on one of those other days if they start to be evasive then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games. They give you just a little bit. 
or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to, sur to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavailable, you know, emotionally unavailable person. All right? See, because they become the seven of swords. Now, at this point, you can deal with this shit. I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom outside of doing something like going to dinner or um drinks i just i want to really spend more time with you around you because i would like to get to know you all right they're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid the rigidness of their routine right so um in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but But do understand that good news and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting. And you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries. And now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around. Or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They, they still come back around being evasive, seductive. You know, the same old thing. Then you might need to... Uh, this is why the I put the world here. You now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation. Okay, you some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. 
that is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You would have to turn into the world, learn the lesson, walk away. A person can institute these types, this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own and there's no trauma. Um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and you and you can walk away, be able to walk away. Um, emotionally um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes, shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you, if the result is this person is coming back and being the same, and some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter because you now know how to deal with with situations. You can readily identify. Also, with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot, but it's also... Uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship or business or family or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy and you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive you need to be more cu curious you need to be willing to learn learn this person you don't know them you do need to do the investigative work the page of swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist the king of swords so anyway but you got to do the work of learning them right so we have all these sevens here seven of wands seven of pentacles and the seven of swords the seven talks about marriage relationships um um business business partnerships it talks about sharing it talks about interpersonal uh dynamic or connection how this person comes off so if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person then you know there's more to the story they're giving you a bit and not the whole so anyway i hope that this was informative to you um thank you for being here continue share this this is relatable information for for anybody um share this video okay thank you guys take care guys